In this video, I'm going to teach you how to create passive income for real. No joke, no scam, no bullshit. There's a lot of stuff going around on the interwebs and people don't really understand how this thing works. Everyone talks about passive income. There's a lot of stuff online like how to develop passive income. Passive income doesn't exist. Well, you know, you're, you're chasing fool's gold or you're wasting your time to trying to develop passive income. And I got asked this question the other day and I realized that many people don't understand how this really works. Be sure to get your free 19 business courses below. The company's name has been rebranded as Hustlers Kung Fu Lifeskills.com. That's what the 19 courses do. They help you with your credit. They help you with child support. They help you how to sell stuff. And they help you how to build a business. So be sure to go below, click that first link, and get your free 19 life skill business courses. I know it's 2016. Everyone's talking about passive income, how to develop a business online. But the truth of the matter is 80 to 85 percent of all commerce is done offline in 2016. Hmm. There are many people that don't know how to build a business other than an online business. And not saying it's bad, but if you're going to be about business, shouldn't you know how to build a business online as well as off? I'm just saying, there's a lot of stuff that goes on with the conversation about passive income. And I see that often the, the conversation is really one sided passive income from an online course, passive income from affiliate marketing, passive income from doing some internet related thing. As I said in the intro, Fully 80 to 85% of all commerce is done offline. So why aren't more people working on that? I'm going to tell you why. Many people are looking to make a lot of money without doing a lot of work. Now, I'm here to tell you that passive income is real. Passive income is possible. And as I put out in the opening, I'm going to teach you how to develop sustainable passive income. Now, what I didn't say was it's going to be a challenge, not impossible, because people do it. Right here, we're at DC Comics. This is a conversation that I had when I used to populate writers groups. And I understood that many people just weren't getting it because I wrote a how-to book and many of them were writing fiction. And it was just like, how can we get some marketing with fiction? And I was like, well, you heard of Spider-Man, right? You've heard of the Manta, you've heard of the Flash, you've seen the T-shirts, you've seen the figurines, right? All of those guys are fiction, fantasy, merch. And now let's get with DC Comics. They got a lot of stuff going on. They've got the characters, there's the comics, there's the movies, the TV, the games. Now, all of this stuff is licensed out to other people. DC Comics doesn't make all these figurines and shirts. What they do is, or a manufacturer or someone like you will say, hey, DC Comics, may I have a merchandising license? And they'll go, well, you know, we really like what you're doing. We like your concept. And we're going to approve you to be a licensed merchandiser of our stuff. See that pregnant pause? DC Comics isn't doing this stuff. They license the rights to the movies. They license the right. There is it's called passive income. Green Lantern. I was reading that as a kid. The Joker. All of these Batman, Superman. These comic book characters are decades year decades old. Matter of fact, let's see. Let's just do this real quick. How old is Superman? I think it was like 1910, 1930, something like that. Um, let's see. And they, they've got this. No, he's older than that. I should say how old is. Let's see. 
when was the super with my bad typing man character when was the the superman created better uh let's see let's go here because i know it was in the night early 1900s uh june 1938 superman is getting close to being 100 years old think about that Think about that. So someone has been making money from licensing out his image, his name, costume for decades. Okay, let's go to another one. Disney. Walt Disney. How old is Mickey Mouse? He's older than Superman. Similar theme, but look, they go into figurines. They go in the store. They've got, now the park they own, but the characters the merch, the costumes, all this is passive income because see, Disney doesn't make this stuff. They license it out and they get royalties, passive income. I'm going to go now. I'm going to put all this together for you because some people are like, well, I can't be Walt Disney. Well, let's look at Walt Disney. Because see, for all of you sad face suckers who want to cry and like, I can't do that. Look at Walt Disney because I am a student of the truth and I'm a student of history and Disney went bankrupt. Read the story, read what he had to go through to get the Mickey Mouse, all this stuff. Just read it. He didn't have it easy. Uh, a lot of bad things happened on his way to creating the Disney brand. It just didn't happen. All right. So let's go to some more recent for a long time. Nike didn't own any factories and a lot of people don't know that. They were a licensing company. They were a marketing company. They didn't make shoes. They marketed the logo. Someone else did the heavy lifting and they got what? What? Passive income to the tune of billions, billions with a B billions. Now, you know, I, I'm, it looks like I'm screaming at you because see, the thing is, this is right before your eyes. So many people are trying to make so much money without doing shit. And then they wonder why they're confused and they're wondering why the money doesn't come. Air Jordan. Okay. Rumored. I think he makes $90 million a year from his licensing passive income of Air Jordan brand. He makes more money now than he did when he was playing. Passive income durable. It's been going on for a long time. Now I know you're like, well, I'm not Michael Jordan. Hold on, hold on, hold on. I'm going to give you something else. Now, this is one of my mentors. I used to work in Northside Hospital when Curtis Mayfield was a patient. And I used to see him all the time because he was what was considered a hard stick. And I had to come from the lab and do an arterial stick on him to get blood for his samples. This man schooled me in passive income, licensing, royalties, the three parts of a song. I was just up there just having this conversation and he was giving me gold. This man was 90 something percent paralyzed and supporting his family off of his passive income. He's like, well, this is how it works. If Ice Cube needs like five samples of something, something, doom, doom, that's 25,000. Or if you do this. Now, see, we're going in a certain you know, theme here. And I'll just go ahead and break out to it. You need to learn how to create something. See, this is the thing. There are many people out there who are riding the dicks of other people and wonder why the fuck isn't that smooth. You're trying to use someone else's intellectual property. You're trying to use someone else's platform. You're trying to use someone else's dick and you want, and it's just like, it ain't working. You're just like, I can't feel it. I can't, I can't get deep with it. You know, see, this is what happens when you use your own dick and you know, you gotta, cause see, when you use your own dick, your creative dick is a big dick. Cause see with your creative dick, you can make it bigger. You can make it thicker. So, you know, when you got a pin to the bed and you like put the tip in and she tries to run you're like, girl, don't run. Don't what you running for. What, what you don't you run? Cause it's your dick. It's not someone else's. And that's what's killing people because everyone is trying to get rich off someone else's dick versus doing their own work. Uh, I get a lot of stuff about hustlers, Kung Fu life skills.com. That's the rebrand. But the thing is, it's mine. 
It's mine. Well, it's part of the trust, and I'll talk about that later. That's going to be a separate video about legacy, estate planning, and trust. But I have the ability to do whatever I want to with that intellectual property because I created it and I own it. If I want to give it away for free, which I am, I can do it because it's mine. I keep saying this and I keep emphasizing this because in 2009, when I started this, I didn't envision a hustlerskungfu.com or a hustlerskungfulifeskills.com. I didn't see that. It came because I got on the playing field of success, suited up, sweated out, worked out. And after I got knocked down, I got back up again. After I got knocked down, I got back up again. That's what it takes. Now, let's keep going because I know now some of you have seen this. Now, Milo is very popular. Once again, this is a character. Very simple. Someone created this baby Milo. He was created. All of this stuff is licensing and merch. All of this. The company doesn't make it. They license out the rights and get a percentage that's durable, passive income while someone else is out there on the whole stroll. Oh, hold on, hold on, hold on. Now I'm about to really pop your wigs. You know what Hello Kitty is. You've seen it, right? Now let me go ahead. Now I'm just going to stroll through this. Doesn't look like much, right? You see that? You see that? You see that? Hello Kitty's got, watch. Hello Kitty is a $2 billion per year brand. to Billy and they don't make none of this stuff. They license it out and they make two billion. Do you understand where I'm going with this? The surest road to passive income, to sustainable and durable passive income is to create something that doesn't exist or to make something that exists much better and put your brand on it. That's how you develop passive income. Now, I know you're going like, okay, well, you know, show me something else. All right. You heard of the super soaker. If you're of a certain age, you probably had one. If you're a certain age, you probably have one in your closet right now. Well, the super soaker was invented by Lonnie Johnson, this brother right here. And what, 20, 25 years ago? He's made close, I think, over 100 million passive income because he licensed the rights to Hasbro, Mattel, I forget which one, to make this. So every time they sell one, cha-ching, Lonnie gets paid. They were trying to play him a little crazy. They tried to curve Lonnie, and Lonnie went to court and won $72 million. And this was on top of the millions he had already gotten out of them. Well done, Lonnie. Well done. This is one of my mentors. You know, he's here in Georgia. I never met him. I'm not going to put that out there like that. It's just I watch from afar and I listen and I learn. Once again, the path to passive and durable and sustainable income is to create something, not to use someone else's dick. All right, we're going to go a little bit more. Now, once you've made something and you've created something, whether it's uh, 5 million, 10 million, 20 million, 30 million, you can start off with just a few million and make this work. So you go ahead and you, you make your Superman. Uh, you, you're, you become Walt Disney. You do you just do it like Nike or this, or you become like Curtis Mayfield. You become a, a creator. This is one of the reasons that when I launch Digital Citizen, this is the stuff that I'm going to be talking about. Or you create Milo. Or you, you do Hello Kitty or you, you do the Super Soaker. One of the reasons I'm being so rough with y'all is so many of you are so damn lazy and so scared to put yourself out there that you're wasting time. The next 10 years, whether you do anything to make your life better or not, is going to pass. So you might struggle building your whatever for two or three years. Then it starts to even out around year four. And then year 10, you're a millionaire. You've got a million dollars a year coming in from your invention, your brand, your hustle. That's how you do it. Not all this quick, hurry up, snappy snap. Oh, I got to have my money now. You sound like a bitch, like a little scared bitch who wants his mommy or daddy. Real adults go out and build things. 
Okay, now that you've got that speech and you're here, once you made your money, then you park it somewhere. Now, the way that my investments run, the company, you know, all the companies that I've created that started being successful, except for the commercial furniture business, everything after that had very high profit margins. So my investments was in me and in the business, in my personal development education. Now, one of the things that's going to happen from a new business that I launch that I see how it's going to happen, we're going to get into commercial real estate. Because let's just say you have a liquidity event, you create something, it's year 10, and then someone says, bam, here's a check for $50 million. Now, let's just be real. $50 million is more money than a lot of generations of families could spend. So what do you do? You're going to have to pay your capital gains taxes, you know, and since you're at that level, you already have your team. So we're not going to talk about that. Then you could like, I'll give you my scenario because, you know, this is what I like to do for fun. If I won uh, 50 million in the lottery or if I created a business or something and I got because there's a scenario for each level of, of income. 10 million, 20 million, 50 million, 100 million. I've got plans if any of that money ever came my way. So for the sake of this video, 50 million. Now let's just say taxes are paid and there's 50 million left. I would take 5 million and put it in my personal bank account. Five. Then I would take 45 million and buy as much class A commercial property as I could get my hands on. I would not get into the bond market. I would not. No, I would nothing. 100% because see at that level, you have enough money to pay cash for the real estate. Now there are some people who will come in. Well, you know, well, just put that down and leverage. No, 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 no. See, those are poor people games. Those are poor people games. I know rich people who use their own money and pay cash for buildings. They, you know, the guy told me, he says, you know, I started off that way and I got all of these investors and I had to deal with, do it their way because I was using their money. And he said, I got fucking tired of it and I started spending my money and I don't let anyone in on my projects and I use my money on everything. And this is a guy worth a hundred million here in Georgia, Georgia boy, didn't go to college. He's just, he's got a hundred million dollars in commercial real estate and he built it himself. Now, 45 million class A. That's going to be, you know, depending upon the market, because, I, you know, I would not limit myself to Atlanta. I would buy anywhere. It doesn't matter if the property's in California and it's a good deal. I'll buy it. If it's in Denver, I'll buy it. It doesn't matter because I'm not going to manage it because at that level, you can go out and hire a professional t leasing team to manage the building, collect the rents, deal with the maintenance. And we're talking seven figures a year after it you know, taxes and stuff and interest and paying everybody passive income. Now that's just one way. I mean, you can go back and you could be like Lonnie and keep your super soaker going, or you could do hello kitty and just, you know, get money out the ass 2 billion a year. So this is how you get true, sustainable and durable passive income by opening up your mind and realizing there's a lot of opportunity out here. It's just not the internet thing. You know, my thing is really interesting because when you go to, let's see, I'm not going to do that because I changed that. A lot of changes. All right. So here we go here. Now I'm going to tell you my passive income story. And this is, this is, this was like 95% of my passive income right here. Uh, this book second, but this is the one that changed my life. Uh, none of these books come close to what this book did in the courses that came from this book. Now, I'm going to tell you what it, it did. In less than eight years, because the channel will be eight years old this year, August, three million income from this book and courses. Three million or eight years, seven years, something like that. Now, here's the thing. When the most money was coming in, I was doing absolutely nothing. I would wake up sometimes with $1,500 to $3,000 in my merchant account every day. And this went on for a few years. Now, let's, let's reverse engineer this process. I went out and hustled my ass off and started doing stuff in the storage auction business that no one else was doing. 
Then later on, after I got out, I sold that intellectual property. Do you understand how this thing works now? Do you, do you get the feel? Now, this is the thing. I'm relatively young and this whole thing about being on the beach and, you know, uh, I lived in Japan for six months. I've been around the world. I don't have that wanderlust that a lot of people who've never been anywhere and I'm not insulting you. I'm just saying that some of these things that you want to do seem larger because you have that thirst. And once you take these trips and go there, you'll be like, ah, I don't really want to do that. I'm like me. I'm good with two or three trips a year. I'm happy. I'm fine. I don't need to be on the plane every time I turn around. Some people, that might be your thing. You might need to be on the plane every week going somewhere. That might be your happy. I'm, I'm just saying, just create your own dreams. Don't be like that guy in the Italian job who stole everyone else's, you know, fantasy or, you know, ideals and concepts because he didn't have any imagination. And that's where a lot of people are. They're like, I have no imagination, so I'm going to do the laptop lifestyle. I'm going to be on the beach. Uh, I'm going to be drinking pina colada. No, 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 no. Go out and create something. Put your best foot forward. Work as hard as you can. Put your soul into something versus hoping and wishing you're going to get some money for little to minimum effort or, quote, leverage. Let's, t you know, I'm telling you. Just let go of a lot of this new wave stuff. Now, I'm going to go old school with you. And look this cat up. This is uh, go back, check out his books. I'm just going to go ahead and make it easy for you because this is some old stuff right here. OK, now. Buy these books. These are not my books. And I don't have an Amazon affiliate code. Peter Trucktiff, the effective executive. All right. Now I'm going to give you someone else. I just was spelling it wrong. Okay. This is the guy that made Toyota. All right. So go to Amazon and these are the books to get. They're timeless. This information doesn't change because you've got to execute. So get everything by Drucker and get everything by Edward Deming, get everything, everything, management. These books will help you build real businesses. These are the things that I read. These are the things that I use. Yeah, they're old and no, they're not all flashy and blah, 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 but the shit works. So that's how you build true, real and sustainable passive income by creating something, building something, being something. That's how you do it. And that's one of the reasons I don't affiliate with a lot of people online because I have seen some things. I'm not going to name names, but I'm just like, you know what? That looks like a duck. It's quacking and I see water on the floor. So I'm just going to stay away from that duck. But if you really want to build yourself some passive income for the future, these are the things. And this is just a few things. I'm just giving you some information to prime your brain to actually engage your gray matter where you'll start thinking and actually get busy building something and creating something and being something. All of this stuff, like I said, you know, I, I've just looked at a lot of things. And a lot of people are chasing some ghosts and they don't realize that Casper is not all that friendly. And that was another thing because Casper, the friendly cat, that's intellectual property. Casper is still around. He is still around because see, this is the thing just because you don't see it all over the place. Uh, it's in another market. Yep. This is another piece of intellectual property that's still making money to this very day. Yep. <laughs> so <laughs> there you have it. All right. So if you liked this content and you should be sure to subscribe, like and leave a comment about how you plan on creating passive income for yourself and your family by doing something and building something in the comments. All right. This is Glendon. I'll see you in the next video.